is to tell you how impressed I am being here in the top eight universities in the country. To give you a message of something that I hope will save your lives and save the lives of those you touch. It is a message that I hope will save you from the pain and the shame and the humiliation that I faced had I heard this speech when I was an undergraduate. On our way back home to Southern California tomorrow, my wife Noha and I are going to have a, a layover in my home state of Arkansas. I want to show my Egyptian wife another part of our country, particularly at the time of year, and see all the fall colors that we don't see uh, in Southern California. But I also, more importantly, I want to visit three graves. When I was your ages, I thought the saddest day in my life was December 17, 1964. I was 14, and that was the day that my mother suddenly died of a ruptured brain aneurysm. She was only 34. My brother's seventh birthday, my brother Jerry's seventh birthday, was the next day. And our baby brother Randy was only three years old and has no memory of his mom. But for a long time, that was the saddest day until 28 years later. At that time, I was, had lost my marriage. I had lost my university faculty position. I was living in a roach and mouse infested house with an ex-convict. And when I got home one afternoon, there was a note uh, on the table from my housemate telling me I needed to call my stepmother because there had been a death in the family. I assumed it was my dad. He had been critically ill with heart disease for several weeks in the hospital. When I called my stepmother's oldest sister, May, answered the phone. Tommy, I'm so sorry. I found him in the woods this afternoon. It was the moment that forever defined my life. It was the moment that is the reason why I'm standing here speaking to you this evening. My brother's decomposing body was found by two dirt bikers as they raced through the woods. He had been missing for two weeks. They found his body sitting at the foot of a pine tree with a bottle, empty bottle of Jack Daniels on one side and an empty bottle of prescription narcotics on the other side. Identification was difficult officially, but his driver's license told the story of a man who had been missing for two weeks in that little Arkansas town. Later, the medical examiner confirmed the identity with, uh, with dental records and ruled the death suicide.